Hello and welcome back to the Novice Lumberjack. Today's video is sparked by uh, a conversation I had on a Facebook group called Chainsaw Repair. And um, basically, long story short, there was this fella who is new to chainsaws, or newer, newish, right? And uh, he was saying that he kept having problems with uh, a Husqvarna, a brand new, mind you, Husqvarna um, 450 Rancher. Uh, well, if you know the 450 Rancher, then you know that's kind of hard to believe that anybody's having that much problems. And so I drew the conclusion, and I could be wrong, that the guy is just a noob and doesn't know what he's doing. Um, and, you know, we all were. All of us. There's nothing wrong with being a noob. You have to start somewhere. Anyways, so this video is Chainsaw Basics for Noobs. And I am going to be rolling through this quickly because it's a lot of material to cover. Number one, don't expect to get a chainsaw right from Lowe's or Home Depot and it run flawlessly right out the box, all right? You have to have a level of tuning. But there's other videos out there on tuning and everybody, you know, how to tune your, your chainsaw and they do a good job. I don't feel like repeating that. So look up how to tune it. But this is really basic knowledge that you should have, hopefully before you even purchase, right? So now I know you can hardly see this. It's <coughs> it's completely for my use, but hopefully you can make out a little bit. The things that we need to look at are basically, uh, I think we have like, three or four different items. Number one is what size chainsaw. And now before I even start on this, we gotta throw out the disclaimer. I know that there are exceptions to the rules that I'm about to make. If you learn about these exceptions and you know about these exceptions, Louis, stop it. Then great, good for you. You're not a freaking noob. Good job. So, what we're gonna start out with is sizing. Basically, you have 50 cc, and that's where you start to separate the men from the boys, right? Anything below 50 cc, that's just going to be a homeowner chainsaw, and it doesn't matter who makes it, it's not going to be all that good of quality. Anything below 50 cc's. 50 cc's and up, anything that is made, I don't care who makes it, is going to be a pretty good quality. Um, there is one possible exception with that that I know of, or I mean, well, there's a bunch, but there's the Chinese saws. A lot of them, you know, they're just crazy names. Like one of them I saw, it's Kucher. That's... Anyways, uh, I mean, I can see getting those to enjoy and have fun with, uh, but know that they're going to come with uh, their own bag of problems. And, you know, some of them can be sidestepped and others you just got to deal with head on and it's junk. But that's your general purpose rule of thumb. Anything below 50 cc's, eh, it's really not designed to last very long. Even the steels and Husqvarna's and Echo's, if it's below 50 cc's, you know, we're talking like 48. There's a, there's a, there's a little cutoff there of I mean, like 48 to 53 cc's, they're still called, considered a 50 cc saw. But anyways, those are steel, Husqvarna, Echo, they all make uh, their own versions of homeowner saws and you know, they're not all that good. But once we start hitting 50 cc's up, uh, we start getting into the farm and ranch saws between 50 and 60 cc's right around that area. And they're really good homeowner saws, right? And then above that, you really start reaching into the professional only. Uh, and those are exceptionally good, last for so many hours. Anyways, so that's what you wanna go about when you're thinking of this, right? What am I? What are my purposes with this chainsaw? Do I just need to clean up that tree that fell down in my yard? Okay, great. How big is it? Is it this big or is it this big? Um, so. And this size definitely does matter. <laughs> and um, uh, if you've got a great big tree that you've got to cut up, maybe you'll want, uh, you know, about a 60 cc farm and ranch saw, you know, um, 
I think Steel, they call theirs the Farm Boss. I know Echo makes a Timber Wolf that's 59 cc's. It's a really good saw. Uh, Husqvarna, they've got their Rancher lineup. And they're good. They're, they're all good saws. Um, anyways, but moving on, you got the size. Now, this one throws everybody for a loop. It's crazy, right? The actual chain sizing and bar sizing. Uh, you have three basic sizes of chains, and those are your pitch, right? And it's a three eighths, and those are usually for your larger saws or professional saws. 0.325, which is for 50 cc saws, all right? You're right there floating in that. Now, depending on if it's steel, Husqvarna, Echo, versus Poland, Ryobi, Craftsman, right? The steel, the, the good saws, even you know down to 40 cc's, they'll still have the 3.325 chain. That is an excellent chain, I think. And then you have the 3 8 low profile. It's the same length as the 3 8 but it's real short so that it doesn't take as big a bite of a wood and a little sissy saw can pull it, all right? So these are for your homeowner saws or possibly your tree trimming saws. Right. The other thing is the gauge of the chain. Every chain has drivers. These drivers are what rides in the, the valley of the chainsaw bar, right? That's a certain width in there. And you need to match up these width numbers for, of the drivers so that it'll fit in your bar. If you have a 0 0.050 uh, bar, like that's most, most all of Husqvarna bars are going to be 0 0.050. Um, but know for sure, all right? It'll say right on it. But you want, if you've got a 0 0.050, you want a 0 0.050 chain, all right? So, so far there's two measurements right there. You've got the pitch, you have the gauge, 0 0.050, 0 0.058, and 0 0.063 are the three different gauge sizes. Uh, 058 and 063 are primarily steel. Um, steel likes to be real proprietary in their things and um, something that works for steel won't work on anything else. Whereas Husqvarna, Husqvarna owns so many different chainsaw brands and so therefore the stuff that works on Husqvarna will oftentimes work on a lot of other things as well or at least can be adapted. So anyways, you got your uh, chain pitch you chain gauge, and the next is the links, right? The links is gonna be determined by how long your bar, up, bar is. This right here is an 18 inch bar. It is 0 .050 gauge, and it requires a 0.325 bar. And the links for that then, I believe it is 72 links. Yeah, 72 DL, so that means your drive links. That's how many links it takes to wrap all the way around this thing. So there's that. The other thing is what is good. Um, basically, even though I'm saying that the homeowner size, uh, size saws can be not the best things in the world, if it's one of these three brands here in the United States, these are our staples for high quality chainsaws. We have our Husqvarna, Stil und Echo. And all of these things, Husqvarna can be found at Lowe's um, and of course various different dealers. Uh, Steel can be found at Ace Hardware and of course various little dealers. It can also be found at Rural King. Um, anyways, and Echo can be found at Home Depot and various dealers. Echo is the hardest to find except for being at Home Depot. There's not a lot of uh, Echo dealers. There's also not a whole lot in the United States of Husqvarna dealers. I mean, there are plenty, there are, but Steel really has the lockdown on their dealer network. And this, in my opinion, is why Steel is seen as the most professional chainsaw <laughs> um, by many people, right? Steel has done a fantastic job in their marketing in the United States of America in telling everybody that, oh, if you want a professional chainsaw, the only thing that, that there is is steel, right? It's just not the case. Echo makes fantastic saws, and of course, Husqvarna makes fantastic saws. Husqvarna also owns Red Max. This is just a red 
uh, Husqvarna 353. That's all that this is. Um, but it's, uh, they make great saws. They used to have John's Red, which is my favorite, and now they're dead. They're gone. But anyways, if you are within this, you're pretty solid, all right? You're getting pretty, you know, the best that your money is going to buy, all right? If you're spending uh, uh, $300 on a chainsaw and you choose any of these three brands, you're going to be safe in the idea that that $300 for a brand new saw, uh, bought you the best saw that you could get. Now there's uh, various different things that could be said, I know, but this is basic guys. They're all good and just keep in mind the 50cc. If you're 50cc and higher, then you're automatically in a higher echelon of saws, right? Um, if you're lower than that, it's very possible you're buying nothing but a homeowner saw and it's not really designed to last all that much. All right. Um, next up, I know I got starting procedure on there and we'll get to that. But before we do, I want to talk about tightening your chain just briefly. Uh, one of the guy's problems with, um, the Husqvarna rancher that he got, uh, he was like, I couldn't get the chain to tighten up and maybe or he couldn't adjust the bar right and maybe he really couldn't maybe it was broken i don't want to think that this guy was stupid but i know for a fact that me personally whenever i first started doing this years ago i broke an adjustment screw because i had forgotten to loosen these two bar nuts so just here's the deal right you can't adjust your bar unless these nuts that are holding the bar in place are loose. It slides back and forth. And you know, nothing's gonna slide back and forth if these are tight. So now at this point, right, you have really just two different places that the adjustment screw is gonna be. It's either gonna be right here or it's gonna be down here. If it's down here, typically you have either an older saw or a cheaper saw. If it's right here, you have either a modern saw or a better saw. <laughs> um, but anyways, whenever you're adjusting this, so then my chain's nice and loose there. I don't know how well you can see that. But it also, the bar moves up and down. All chainsaws are gonna do this. Whenever you're tightening, See, whenever you use this chainsaw, you pull like this. You drive that bar into the wood, which then, of course, applies pressure to the bottom of this bar, thus lifting it. And so whenever you tighten it, if you tighten it just the way that it is, then eventually as you use it, it'll go like that and you're, it'll loosen the, the, the chain. So. We pull up on it while we are tightening that adjustment screw. We get it where we want it. That's good. We dip down like that, holding the, holding the bar up as we snug up the bar nuts. All right, now once you got them snug, it'll hold itself. Then you get up here and you get a nice little snug. Nothing special here, man. Don't go wailing on it because you can tear up your saw that way. Bada bing, bada boom. So what we've covered is what size chainsaw to look for, what's going to separate the, the less quality from the greater quality. And it's largely has to do with that 50cc. 50cc and up, you're getting into the good quality saws. Below 50 cc tends to be nothing but homeowner, right? Your brands, Husqvarna, Steel, and Echo. If you buy any of those on any level, you're getting about the best saw that you can get for the money that you are spending, right? Over here, we have the chain and bar sizing. Three different pitches is three eighths. That's your bigger and more professional saws. 
0.325, that's your midline, middle grade saws, and 3 8 low profile, and it's the cheap stuff. That's your little tiny craftsman, little tiny Polands, things like that, that you pick up. And just ugh. The gauges is important too, that's the actual thickness of the chain drivers and the slot of the bar that you're using. If you've got a 0 .050 bar, then you need to get a 0 .050 chain. Last up, if the drive links, that'll be, for this bar specifically, it's 72 DL, 72 drive links. All right, so last up then, starting procedure. Starting procedure is gonna be the same on nearly every small engine, okay? What you need to do is you need to choke it. Whenever you apply the choke, you fire, you pull on it until it hits. One, one little hit. Once it does, you push that choke back in. Now with these chainsaws, all of your modern stuff is going to come with a setting, okay? So first off, my ignition is on. Right. I pull my choke out, and now that right there has engaged what's called a high idle. Pulling the choke out automatically engages the choke and the high idle. On anything modern, we're talking pretty much 2000, the year 2000 and up, this is going to work, right? Um, so now we pull on it. Oh, prime it. If you have a primer ball, prime it. There we go, you can hear and feel it pressurize. And we pull until the engine initially hits. Here, now we push our choke in. Now the choke is off, but your high idle is still engaged, All right? Set that brake. So the little blip of the throttle made it calm down because it releases the high idle. Let's see if you can hear it. I'm engaging the choke and then I immediately push the choke back in and now listen for a click. There it is. I just disengaged the choke or the high idle. So that's how we work with a modern saw. If you are enjoying your older stuff like I tend to do, uh, there it is. This right here is ancient. I believe it's early 70s. I don't know, but it still runs pretty darn good. So the point of it is, is this has a different type of high idle. This high idle, you have to manually set it yourself. What you'll do is you hold down the uh, operator presence lever, which that you can't squeeze the throttle without depressing that. So you depress that, you pull your throttle in, and then you push the button. With the button engaged, you release the throttle, and it holds the throttle partially open. Then you choke it, make sure your power is turned on, your ignition switch is on, you guys how to properly operate something as old as this it requires a finesse and knowledge of what's going on as you saw that while I was trying to get it to quickly throttle 
Well, there's two reasons it wasn't doing that. One is because it I didn't let it warm up enough. You want it something that's all it definitely needs to warm up. And two, who knows? It's old as the hills. <laughs> so uh, you just have to learn it. Learn that, you know, if it's wanting to die whenever you give it all the throttle, you might have to do some adjusting on that carburetor. So, but anyways, I just want to pull that out because it's pretty neat. Um, and I think that does it. I hope you like the picture of the video that is yours truly as a small child. <laughs> anyways, I was, that was seventh grade. No. Was it seventh grade? It might have been, it might have been sixth grade, but anyways, yeah, I think it was, it was sixth grade in my basketball uniform with my high socks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I know that this is foreign to a lot of you guys. It's foreign, it was foreign to me forever, but the deal is, is if you like something uh, and you click that like button, all it does is it shows you more from my channel and channels like mine. Um, and, you know, I get it. I rarely subscribe to anything, but as I'm getting older, I'm a little bit more free with it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like free love, you know, because if you like and subscribe, it helps my channel tremendously. And I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can actually start getting a little bit of money for these videos. I mean, it's not much, but you know, if I'm going to do it, yeah, I want that 50 bucks. <laughs> so anyways, if you're, if you've watched it this long, obviously you like it. So click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, later. Oh, let me know in the comments if you think this is stupid. If I miss something, because I like it whenever I get to read y'all's comments. So, anyways, I try and answer.